Spyro, we didn't pay our taxes. They're, they're gonna come after us. Oh man, Spyro the Dragon. One of the games of all time. I hesitated to make this video because I knew I had to give it justice. So I hope I give it justice. And I've actually beaten the reignited version 120%, but I chose to go with the original because personally the remake just looks too good. So with that being said, let's make like a banana and jump right in. We start off in the artisan's world with a TV interview. All is good until they bring up the notorious Nasty Nork. And we don't think too kindly of him. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Vampire. And then insulting his appearance puts him over the edge. He is ugly. So he just swings his club and turns every adult dragon into a statue. And that type of weaponry should be banned. The mission is simple. Rescue the dragons, recover the treasure, and defeat Nasty Nork. Looks like I've got some things to do. We drop in at the home base, and what do you know, there's a freebie right at the spawn, and he gives us the main objective. Free ten dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. Considering each homeland branches out into four outer levels, in no particular order, let's drop into Stone Hill, which can be described as open lands with shepherds and rams. And I haven't seen this many rams since the FBI broke into my house. <laughs> But there's more to this than meets the eye. Spyro, my friend, how about a hint on gliding? Of course, gliding can get us to areas that may have looked out of bounds. Which is where we spot the first egg thief. He's just standing there, menacingly! I believe I've done enough here, so let's head out. Oh boy, what's next? Hidden within this mystical hedge maze is Dark Hollow, where the little green guys come with upgrades. Little shields that look like tinfoil. There's even giant henchmen. <laughs> Spyro, want to know a secret? Nope. Now you see, levels come in all shapes and sizes. In this town square. <laughs> Welcome to town square, Spyro. And I've always loved this place. There's a lot of bulls here, and I'm not talking about what you would eat porridge out of. Here we encounter more complicated glides. Ones that lead us to another egg man. He's a thief! It's pretty much just a nice town that's overrun with bulls. I had the worst itch on the tip of my... Now it looks like we did enough to finally enter the boss level in this fiery dragon mouth. To Toasty. This boss has many tricks up his sleeve. It's a grim reaper like pumpkin, who if you burn twice, just turns out to be a sheep on stilts. Yeah. Yay, we did it. Now with every dragon saved here in the artisan's world, we can head on down to the docks to meet up with Marco the Balloonist, sending us on our way to Peacekeepers. This level has it all. Usable cannons to snipe enemies, perfect trajectory, and they even have these really nice tents. Hey. Oh, what the f I'm feeling a little wet, so let's head on into the dry canyon. Here we face off against hungry vultures and big guys with baseball caps, but that's just small talk. You see, the main challenge here comes at the very end. You see that dragon up there? Well, so do I. And I'm just wondering how the heck do I get up there? I looked around until I found a mysterious hole in this rock, in which I flew inside of it to get me up to this ledge. I used it to glide around the rock and land exactly where that dragon was. Incredible glide, Spyro! Let's keep it moving. And there's no better place to move than to Cliff Town, a classic level featuring this big yam and her knife-wielding children. I wonder what she's cooking in here. It's most likely a seafood boil. Now the main action happens when we climb on top of the buildings here, where a huge gliding opportunity awaits us. What's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? And by gliding across the river, we really do find out. We find out that the Eggman is taunting me from below. It just looks like a little blue pixel, but I know it's him. So I sniped him. That's the Eggman speedrun. Now, although it's a very desert style map, down here in this cave, we have the Ice Cavern. And I couldn't believe my eyes. Well, I'm blind, so my eyes don't even believe themselves. But big purple ogres and even Jingle Bell snowball guys? It was all running smooth until I came up against these fully armored fellas. But as Jesus once said, armor can make their feet very slippery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about it for this one. It's a big perimeter with nothing in the middle, but it's fun. Ice Cavern. Call now. With the three levels complete, it's now time for the boss battle against Dr. Shemp. This guy thinks he's so cool. He's got cool shades on. He taunts you with a finger gun, but I like to think he's like a cool guy from a greaser movie going, hey, <laughs> that's how I would do it. We flame his butt not once, not twice, 
but, but three times. And we can move on with our lives. So we meet up with Gosnol the Balloonist and take flight over to Magic Crafters. Welcome to Magic Crafters. Anyway, there's many wizards here. You got level one mages, level two weather manipulators, and even masters of matter manipulation. They all make fun noises, so that's a plus. We're also introduced to the supercharge ramps that come in handy now going forward. Supercharge. Supercharge. So why don't we just charge our way into Wizard's Peak? <laughs> where we use many of the supercharge ramps to bop these big wizards. To be completely honest with you, I didn't explore this level the way it was intended to be explored. Apparently there's a lot of supercharge transfers that get you to secret areas and... Ow. Now, failing to explore Wizard's Peak has my morale a bit low, so why don't we head to the high caves? Where on the inside, armored spiders roam freely, and they're invincible. Luckily there's a fairy here to give me a hot kiss. <laughs> Now on the outside, the level is just beautiful. Look at this scenery. Okay, let's keep moving. Now as opposed to the wintry theme, Alpine Ridge is more of a dry, cold area. There's no snow, except on top of the mountains. Knowledge. And the green wizards are still playing tricks on me, but they're not so confident when I get up close to them. Ah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> With three of the Magic Crafters lands completed, now it's time to go against the final boss, Blowhard. It's an evil twister. A rather easy adversary to take down, although he does have wizards protecting him, and I haven't broken this much wind since. Well, I always do. Oh, so we leave, because we're done here. And like the great Patrick Starr once said, I know what I want to do today. It's a balloon joke. So we meet up with Tuco. Tight, 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 yeah! <laughs> Beast Makers, the ugliest world in the game. It's a very electrified, swampy world controlled by these little green goobers. And I wonder what they're listening to. It's probably 1998 Billboard smash hit, Getting Jiggy With It by Will Smith. After getting hog wild for a bit, we hop right into the first portal to Terrace Village. And like the level suggests, it's a nice little village on a terrace. The Norks in these parts have discovered the power of electricity. They're like mini green Thomas Edison's. There's even some fellas here fitted with electro turret machinery who make the best death noises. <laughs> Good job, Spyro! This level just requires a lot of timing to avoid the shock floors, basically. That's pretty much it. But it's great. Moving on forward and into Misty Bog. And I don't like what I'm seeing here. I read this is one of the hardest levels in the entire game, but I can kind of see why. You know, these plants are like heat-seeking missiles, and you can't just avoid them. And like a kid who bullies you at school, you gotta kill him. Be on the lookout for attack frogs! You got this big log here that you can jump into? Ah! Am I an iPhone? Because... These boars are charging me. Now, we continue wandering throughout the swamp until behind this giant tree is a portal to the treetops. One of the most notorious levels in all of Spyro. And with Lyle saying this... Don't just stop at one supercharge. He could be hinting at the near impossible to reach dragon, who can only be found by transferring multiple times onto all of the ramps and even going backwards on one. You gotta use your entire brain at this level. I lost nearly all my lives trying to figure it out. You've learned a lot since you were a young glider. Well, you could have found an easier spot to get stuck. Speaking of my forehead being absurdly huge, Metalhead. This big robot is all charged up to meet you. Now, right away I was overwhelmed. I actually forgot how this went, but it looked like a very convoluted boss battle, and I was scared. It turns out you just gotta destroy his power pylons and he, and he runs away. Why are you running? Destroy the pylons again, and he dies. <laughs> With my time in Beast Makers complete, I meet up with Cray the Balloonist to make my departure into the beautiful world of Dream Weavers. Welcome to the Dream Weavers, young one. Now, there's a lot of mischief going on here, like the invincible elves with their clocks, and even a guy in the middle with a shrink cannon, who kind of helps you out even though it's an enemy. But it is quite a beautiful sight to see. But it also leads to scary sights to see, with our first portal taking us into Haunted Towers. This is the level with the big invincible knights, but we all know that invincible means a fiery kiss awaits me. All dragons know there's magic in a fairy's kiss. It's definitely a top tier level for me. There's just so much to explore, especially finding the hidden dragon named Capano, who can only be found by taking a treetops-like route. You've become a master of the supercharge. Spyro, help. The government's watching me. Oh, man. First it was haunted towers, now it's dark passage. The enemies here are gonna be quite frightening. There's light fairies that change demons to dogs and dogs to demons. 
that there's even evil cupids that hurt you with their love. This is one of the larger, more convoluted levels in the game, featuring an entire other side of the map that, of course, if you can find it, I know I did. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. After our dark passage, we do encounter another adjective and area that goes by the name of Lofty Castle. Now, one can only assume that there will be a castle in loft format, with flying turkeys running amok. That's not even that important. I just wanted to say amok. And balloon holding goons that are kind of fun to kill. <laughs> We mainly just release the fairies from captivity in order to make magical lifts that guide us throughout the level. It's a rather simple and fun adventure, and I'd give it an enthusiastic two thumbs up. With those three spooky, wacky, and crazy levels gone, the only thing left to do is go up against Jacques. Any advice before this battle? Aim high in life, but watch out for flying boxes. Jack in the box? Jacques, how nice. He quickly throws presents at you like a like an old sugar daddy and runs away until he has nowhere left to go. <laughs> what more can there possibly be after meeting up with Amos the Balloonist? Just a nice quick flight over to Nasty's world. This ain't dragon territory no more. You're in Nasty's world now, Spyro. So there's not much to explore here besides the first open dragon's mouth to Nork Cove. Hey, uh, you might want to hit that barrel there. This level reminds me of the docks from Monsters Inc. Scream Team, featuring a lot of enemies I'd like to have sex with. Keep up the good work, Spyro. Next mouth to Twilight Harbor. Another watery atmosphere, except this time, the Norks come equipped with advanced weaponry, or guns. Be on the lookout for Nork Commandos. These guys here have swords and grenades, like a classic pirate would. Speaking of classic pirate... <laughs> There's just so many bullets to dodge here. I was killed a few times, but with the right mindset, I was able to Only now can we finally take on Nasty Nork himself. Now to beat this, it's essentially a speed run that goes like this. Green egg guy has a key. I better chase him down. Check. Good. Now I can unlock this door that leads to another egg guy with key. I better go chase him down. <laughs> Got him. I will then use this key to unlock the stairway to Nasty. Kinda sounds like an alternate title to Breaking Bad. He's not really into fighting, just running away with his thumping hyperspeed. Luckily I can glide and he can't, so I close in on him and burn him a bit. He escapes into a lava room with platforms, but you gotta be quick, because they're retracting into the walls. Nowhere to run now, partner. You're toast, Nord. This man could turn every dragon to stone from a whole different world, but against me alone, his only option was to run away. <laughs> what will you do next? I'd say the sky's the limit. And that's the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chimichanga.com, featuring 100% completion. And this is a Bud Light Seltzer Sour Watermelon 100 Calorie Drink. Spyro, get the battle pass. Like a midget in a urinal, I was gonna have to stay on my toes. <laughs>